more strawberry production. And one of the things that's core different in indoor production is that you can stack plants. Because Vert vertical farming. Out here it doesn't make sense to stack plants because you're depending on the sunlight. Yeah. But if you don't depend on sunlight, you can stack them. So the question is, how high could you stack them? And I look at this as a matter of layers. So n equals one is outdoors. Everything that's out there today <laughs> is n equals one. And I wanted to try n equals two. So strawberry plants at two levels. And then with different kind of lighting systems, different, all with hydroponics, all GH hydroponics. Strawberries were in there. Coconut core was a substrate. We knew this would work. We also had a set of plants in the greenhouse, but wanted to see how they would grow in an indoor environment. So I converted a lab on campus in Wixon Hall. It's like a concrete building, okay? And set it up there, and, and we tried it. I had a Brazilian student here who was very much into strawberries, although had never done anything inside or in, in substrate before. So he learned a lot, and he was doing this as part of his PhD thesis. I said, well, I want to know, you know, First of all, you know, do, how does it affect flowering, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And we did. So we wanted to do, learn about production. Uh, we're going to stick some of those strawberries in our mouth, too, to see if they taste good. You know, whatever. You know, all, basically, whatever we could learn. Set it up. And, um, and then while this was running, suddenly I started getting a lot of requests for tours. Okay? And in fact, I had already gotten many requests for tours here because in, the, in 2009 to 2012, I did more tours here than my entire life before. In fact, I do more tours on campus than probably any other professor. Because people call me up and say, can I come see it? And then, so I had legislators, I had government people looking at it, I have environmentalists looking at it, everybody wants to see it. Okay, so this has never been seen before that you could do this. And so I started getting even more tours people wanting to see the indoor production of, you know, the impact of plants. And so, you know, okay, I would show. And one guy comes by and says, well, I, I build clean roofs in big factory buildings, and I'm interested in whether we could use a clean room to do what you're doing here. And I said, well, I don't see any fundamental reason why not, but I think you'd have a hard time proving it to anybody unless you do it. And he says, how do we do it? He says, well, what do you want to do? He's like, I give you the spot, you build it, we'll try it, and make it work. He said, okay. He said, okay. <laughs> you have to remember, this was, this, was, this was half a million dollars stuff here. And something like this is like half a million dollars stuff. Okay. So somebody say, yeah, let's do it. Somebody as crazy as him, really. Fundamental. Okay. <laughs> so there's another crazy one. Crazy is good. Crazy is good. Okay. And I want to meet said, that when, person. When do you want to start? And I said, Well, God, you know, the factory in Indonesia is a little behind. I got to go there. We got a job in Arabia. I uh, looked. We'll, we'll slot it in, and so it got scheduled between his various installation jobs that he was doing all over the world. And and finally, it was like, okay. Um, we start building here. And so this has now been here probably 14 months, 15 months. It's still a work in progress. It's, it's, I'm not sure that it will ever be finished, but it's finished enough to where we can learn some very interesting things. But it is a highly insulated material. So this is probably better insulated than many standard buildings. I asked for it to be built here, in this spot. Because this is the central valley of California. It's kind of like the Atacama. Not quite as bad. But I tell you, I've been at the Atacama and it was not as hot as yours. <laughs> but the Atacama was on my mind. And it's largely because I had Francisco with me and, you know, and he had come. He wants to do hydroponics in that part of Chile because, gosh, you know, it's like it's a great place, but nothing works. So how are you going to do agriculture there? Well, we know how. And so I figure if I have this solution and I have indoor production at the same time, I can grow from anywhere, even in the Atacama. So the Atacama is on my mind as I want to grow plants in the Atacama Desert to prove to people 
that it is not impossible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yes. Now you're seeing the rocket science side of this because we can do this on Mars. We haven't managed to do it on the Okay. okay. But some of us know the magic. We know the magic sauce. Okay. So, so anyway, we started building this. And he asked me, well, what size do we build it? And I said, well, how tall can you build it? What is the maximum? It's like, and I, I told him I wanted it as close to cubic as possible. Because I know as a mathematician that the minimum surface area of the volume is the cube. And energy is going to be the huge thing here. Energy, you know, because if it's really hot around on the outside, you're trying to get rid of heat, you've got to manage that. Or if it's really cold on the outside and you want heat on the inside, you have to deal with the skin, the skin. So I said, I, I want it as cubic as possible. So we penciled it out and said, okay, we'll do this. It's not exactly cubic, but it's, it's close. So I'm going to take you in. Uh, it's not operating right at the moment. In fact, one of the interns came and took all the lamps out that she could get her hands on. You'll see those lamps in another trial later on. But So it looks a little stripped out right now. But we're basically in the process of setting up another section to do a whole other set of things. One of the things that happened after the Wixon project, the Wixon Hall project, was that I had the entire production crash. I had a huge problem. We started having spider mites and we could not control it. The spider mites were crazy. We had no way to apply pesticides because we're in a building where other people have offices and labs. So we basically pulled a plug. I said, we're not, we're not going to be able to do this. And the water quality was really bad in that building. So I was constantly battling pH problems and I finally said, it's just not going to be feasible here. With what we know today, we can't do it at Wixom Hall. So I started pulling it apart and rebuilt part of it over in environmental horticulture. And then as this has come online, we started doing things here. Here I am at a production level of 8. N equals 8. So 8 layers. Let's go on it. So it's going to feel a little stuffy because we don't get much. We are sealed from the outside completely. We have no holes, which means there's also no drain for water. And all the water that comes in here has to come in with a, come on in. There's enough light for, for us to be in here. And um, Ooh, better open. So basically what's happening here is if we go into this side over here, now technically everybody should take their shoes off, but I think we'll skip that today. There's a window here you can look in. The lights are all off right now, but you can see the layer. Okay? Can you get in with this door? Well, you, you can get in with it. There's actually a hatch right right there. That is actually that slides up. You can get in there also. But uh, this was designed for eight layers of strawberry. For eight layers of lettuce, actually. Of lettuce. And lettuce was our primary focus, mm -hmm. or other leafy greens. That and this is enter this much space. This is an industrial quality clean room. The same as is used Correct. to make chips for Correct. Intel or any other big or company. Or pharmaceuticals. Or pharmaceuticals. And in this case, all the moisture transpired by the plant is recaptured and returned to the plant. Nothing is lost. Correct. This is 100% water efficient. Correct. The only water that leaves is what's in the produce. Correct. Wow. Great achievement. That has never been done before. And we actually haven't done it yet either. Okay? because we run into issues. But it's not impossible. We know it's not impossible. We just don't yet know how to do it. Okay? And that's what we need more research for. This is the, this is the state of the art. This is, this is production at a level when you tell a scientist, an agricultural scientist, we're going to put right as much water as is kilograms of biomass in the end. They will say, you are nuts. You, are, <laughs> you, you need to become realistic. Okay, that is a dream that cannot be done. Okay, and today you can say, well, I know some place where somebody's doing it. Mm -hmm. And the last plants we pulled out of here, we had done that. It's just that we had problems with the plants. And the, I don't, I don't want to get into what the kinds of things are, kinds of issues are, but uh, it takes time. 
You have to it just takes out. time. Yeah, and, and there's a whole... The thing is that in hydroponics, if you're going to try to grow plants... Actually, could we close the door, please? Oh, sorry. It was light. Uh, there, there's enough light in here. So. There is now. Okay. So the... Um, Well, anyway, the thing is that the uh, we have possibilities here, things that we can do that otherwise you cannot do. So one problem that immediately started happening is the news leaked out that we had achieved this. And um, so now he's not coming here to finish this because he has to build the units for other people. As they're putting in purchase orders, he has to go build the clean rooms. Okay. Now, from where you're sitting, you can look up. You can actually see the HEPA filter at the top. HEPA filter? Yes. Is this something you invented? No, no. This is it's super standard, pure. Standard in all clean rooms. Is the air gets filtered all the time is to the very the high standard. Is it and all the water comes here? And then this water you can use it? This water we can reuse, yes. Is the water coming from plant transpiration? Yes. Is it different from...? No, this is that water. Is it... So, so he's building... things in this water? Because shouldn't be. No. It's distilled water. So it's, it's, it's all condensate. He's building more clean rooms for people that want to do this? Yes. We've, I, I know that we built one. Well, actually, I, he and I partnered on a company mm -hmm. to do the plant production in this kind of facility. So we have, it's called Clean Room Plant Productions is, is our LLC. And so we get a lot of people very interested. It's usually sticker shock when they see the quote. Okay. Because this ain't cheap. Okay. okay. But it is financially feasible, actually. I think you can actually do high value, high quality vegetables for, particularly for, for like chefs who are mm -hmm. frequently willing to pay yeah. anything mm -hmm. so that the plate looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you're not going to go to Applebee's and sell it to them. But, you know, <laughs> no, but the other higher. companies, well, the, the kind of clients that you have, yeah. many of them, you know, they, I mean, they won't, they're not going to tell you they'll pay anything. But the reality is. If they need to get the best possible plate in front of people, you know, this is one way to do it. And here also, you can selectively pull out the very premium leaves for somebody. You know, like if you're doing romaine, you don't have to sell the big leaves. Oh, you you big sell leaves. all the leaves that are like this. Okay. <laughs> well, you probably already do that now, right? You cherry pick the, which is why they keep coming to you. They look at that, oh my god, you can never get this in a bag coming out of the grocery store. So doesn't exist, but the market is here. Yes. So here you can do this, and guess what? You can do this in downtown Montpellier. You can do this on Mars. Can you transfer this the container is what it's gonna look into like. a container room? Yeah. Okay, so the container, people have already done containers like this. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot of, not a lot of companies, but there are a number of companies who have been trying to get that to work. Okay. And the majority of them have failed in some way. They're not, it's not a stable industry at this point in time, but it will be, because the same thing we can do, they can do also. But we will generally find this to be economically advantageous, because here we're building out of a highly insulated material, and we can custom build this thing to any size we want. And in a container, you have a ceiling that's right here. So when you try to do n equals three, there's not enough room. For three, okay, there isn't barely enough room. You may need to grow just short stature plants, and then you can do three, maybe four. But you will always lose something. You know, here, I have the same thing if I can only grow to that level, but if I go this tall up, then I have an unlimited space in which to put layers. And you can see the very last one frequently has some inefficiency associated with it. You know, we're still trying to work all that out. But we have m a much greater chance of optimizing the kind of production. And then tomato plants in the greenhouse, if you've ever seen greenhouse tomatoes, they're very tall. Yeah. They don't fit in the container. Meters, yeah. they, they do fit there. Yeah. <laughs> they do. So we can do things here. I know this will be much more capable down the road and um, but the key is that you know the insulation the clean room characteristics it's just it's just an amazing thing you know and and the key to indoor production you know you're gonna have to figure out how to use the pest management 
Are you going to do with biological control, or are you going to do eradication? I already found that biological control didn't solve it for me, so I'm going to total eradication and blocking, which is why when somebody goes in there, they have to they have to wear a jumpsuit, the hairnet, gloves, whatever. That's why we're not going in. Just like once a, once it's in there, once it's in there, it's like ah, oh, you're not getting it out. Methylene bromide. That's about all you got. Yeah, right now, and and I. It could be recaptured. Can't sell the it could be recaptured. <laughs> the biggest problem. The biggest problem is if you go in here and you put methyl bromide in here, the entire thing is out of production. Oh yeah. For a significant period of time. So and this production is so intensive that each week you will lose thousands and thousands of dollars that you're done. Each day, you're losing massive amounts of money. That's not going to be sustainable here because we're barely pushing against the price barrier as it is today. Ozone. So, UV, not adequate, are they? Well, UV we're already using. It's already in the system. We have put a, have a UV uh, lamp in. Um, ozone, it would be exactly the same problem. You would be, it, it reacts with every organic molecule. It, the leaves would be burnt. Oh no, you'd have to do it in between crops. Yes. Couldn't possibly do it with plants in here. There isn't going to be an in between crops. <laughs> in a system like this. Okay, it's gotta be clean. To be, everything is happening all the time, all stages of production. The way you manage the system is all the spaces in use.